All right, well, welcome back to Beyond the Weekend podcast. And this week, it's a real treat for me because we're joined in the studio, not only with our good friend, Paul Heath. Hello. Hi, Paul. But sitting in front of me, we have Terry Wren and Steve Bow. Ta-da. Terry and Steve, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Yep. So uh, first time on the podcast, gentlemen? <laughs> well, on, 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 this, on this podcast. Yeah, on this particular. We have done... A podcast mm, mm. beyond the weekend. Okay. Should I explain yeah. it? Should I explain what that is? Sure. Paul Heath, jump in here, buddy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so once upon a time, <laughs> we were going to have Terry and Steve review a Hallmark movie mm-hmm. on Beyond the Weekend. Okay. For kind the of... Christmas episode mm. in between Christmas Eve and New Year's. Just two grown men watching a Hallmark movie and yeah. reviewing it. You Got were, it. Yeah. Got it. Two. Okay. Old man. (laughs) (laughs) Reviewing a Hallmark movie. I feel like that is a Hallmark movie. Uh, Like, where two guys would watch a Hallmark... Okay, anyways, Paul, take it. And I think it's not that it wasn't good, but I think we were 45 (laughs) minutes in, and I don't think you guys even watched the same movie. (laughs) Like, we were so far into it, and you're like, wait, what movie are you watching? Oh, no. (laughs) It was hilarious. (laughs) Terry's dry sense of humor was, was... beaming but we didn't air that episode we decided to mm, okay to hide that one okay so okay so there, there are other podcasts on the cutting room floor apparently that's yeah. good how do, yeah. how do we get into that secret vault but that's what i want to know paul, paul is the only man that knows where with that, the keys to that where vault. That is buried, yes. what i love though is whatever podcast that was because i didn't hear it but apparently it took you guys 45 minutes to realize that you weren't even you didn't even watch the same movie so well okay yeah, all right. Steve never, you didn't tell me what movie to watch. I told you what movie to watch, but I watched the wrong one. I watched another one because I got bored watching that one. Oh, okay. Oh. That's right. Never mind. Right. But I think it's more about how generic Hallmark movies are that we mm. didn't realize till got, minute 45 oh, that's that it. you're not actually talking about the same yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah, you guys, that yeah. is not an indictment against either of you because oh. you are both very sharp gentlemen. So <laughs> it's, it's an indictment against... Yeah. The Hallmark community. Okay. All right. Well, anyway. Okay. Yeah. But this, but yeah. this week is not about Hallmark movies. Um, we invite you just to save your Hallmark trivia for another another podcast, another day that won't get aired. This day, though, <laughs> I've invited you into the studio because um, you are uh, both of you. You have served uh, this church, served outside of this church, served in countless areas. And um, and you've served together side by side, and as serving together, your relationship, your friendship has grown stronger. So we're gonna dive into that in a few minutes, mm-hmm. um, and we because I got questions, um, and I want to hear some stories. But before we do that, Paul, you got a, you got a couple things to get us started, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I got a question. So if you could eat only one Costco muffin Ooh. of the flavors, there's some holiday flavors, and I guess you could pick one of those. But we're talking the poppy seed, the blueberry, and the chocolate. You can only eat one of those. For oh, the those rest are of your those life. are the only three you're giving us. Which ones are you thinking of? Because I don't think there's any that you can get all year round. They got a crumb one, don't they? Oh, have yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. They, they have a, like a maple crumb. Yeah, or, I yes, thought yes. that was seasonal. Is that always okay. there? I think it's there ninety percent of the time. Well, are you guys uh, choosing that one? <laughs> well, you guys spend too much time at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, all right, Terry. Yeah, well, well, I'm gonna just I'm I'm gonna just take chocolate. I'm I'm. It's always going to be chocolate. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Cho- you know, my knee-jerk reaction was chocolate. Yeah. And then I thought, there's not anything else like the poppy seed Costco muffin. Oh. But there is other things like chocolate. You know, chocolate yep. cake is good. Okay. Mm-hmm. I-, I could get my chocolate fill somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But the poppy seed Costco muffin is unlike any other poppy seed muffin. But, Paul, you're not worried about the poppy seed stuck in the teeth? Because, no. I mean, that is no. I, the whole time after I'm eating a poppy seed muffin, I'm going... I'm trying to suck the poppy seeds out of my teeth because I'm scared to death that mm. you're just gonna have the big black They're poppy seeds. They're not super right aggressive the poppies. <laughs> That's what's nice about the Costco one. Wait, what's an aggressive poppy there's seed some, versus there's a- some harder poppies? <laughs> I don't know. Mm. All right. So Terry Wren says chocolate. Just chocolate. But, yeah. And that's a double chocolate. It's a chocolate oh, yeah. muffin with chocolate chips in the middle of it. Yeah. Paul Heath, you're saying poppy seeds. Steve Bow, we're coming to you. So this is interesting because it's a poppy seed. Or no. Sorry. Let me back up. What? It's a, it's a muffin. Okay. Costco muffin. <laughs> And you have this choice of three, and somehow you think that these are nutritious for you. So you would think, oh, mm. I'm going to the blueberry because I get a fruit <laughs> right. out of this, right? That's right. And then you think, mm. well, you know, chocolate, obviously, mm, 
that doesn't work. That's just you. dessert. That's just yeah. dessert at uh-huh. that point. So you go to the poppy seed right in between, right? Because I don't even know, are poppy seeds good for you? Who even knows that? They huh? probably got some good iron in there. I'm just going to okay. throw that out there. That's probably not true. Other than I've always heard that you don't eat a poppy seed muffin before you take a drug test for your work because That's, then they'll you'll test positive yeah. for some opioid or something. Yeah, that was on a and, Seinfeld one. Yeah, time. I remember yeah. that was, Seinfeld, yeah. yeah. But yeah. all that to say, I would choose the poppy seed if it was the only one. You that, would? Yeah. Okay. But then okay. you brought up that crumble one, and I love that one, too. Yeah. That's really But that's good. not on the running, apparently. With no. this it can be in the running if you want it to be. I mean, I, I oh. just think it's seasonal. Here's, here's what I'm doing. I'm going blueberry all day, every day. Okay. But I, I find it so deceiving when you get the Costco blueberry muffin, and there's four blueberries on top, and you cut it open, and you tear it apart, there's and there's none. no blueberries inside. None on the bottom. There's just four <laughs> blueberries on top. So you can't, you know, it's like, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge mm. the blueberry muffin by the number of blueberries on top, because chances yeah. are, whoosh, nothing mm. on the inside. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, yeah. it's like the Seinfeld episode where, the, where they sold the muffin tops. Oh, yeah. did you yeah. ever see yeah. that yeah. one? Yeah, top of the muffin to you. <laughs> <or>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kramer just hilarious. wanted yes. thought that was a great business idea. Dude, everything always comes back to Seinfeld in yeah, this world. Does. Yeah. 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 yeah, We've lost half of our audience. So. I'm going to see Jerry Seinfeld in November. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. He and Jim Gaffigan are doing a combined show. No. And my wife and I got tickets. So we're, Jim Gaffigan we're is off one of your favorites. Just got tickets for you and your wife? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, did, I couldn't think of any family that would want to go with us. So we mm. just, just, just me and my mm. wife. Huh. This, okay. this might be an appropriate moment to uh, share with our listeners that mm. Terry Wren is not only a longtime friend of mine, but he's also my father-in-law. <laughs> that is, that is father to my wife. So, mm. um, and won't be attending. So, uh, <laughs> and won't be attending Jim Gaffigan. Gaffigan. Gaffigan, so. <laughs> oh, but Terry, th- would this be the appropriate time to say I think we need someone to watch our kids that weekend? Ooh. Would you? Uh, <laughs> if it sounds, uh, it sounds like you're free. You're free enough to go see that show. So would you and Kelly mind watching the kiddos that weekend? Chances are Melissa's already sent that text. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You yeah. know what? We'll do family okay. business later. All right. All right. Do that later. Paul, do you have another? Do you have a follow up for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, if you could only watch movies from one decade, Ooh. which decade are you choosing? Okay. Okay. All right. Mm. So, I mean, are you going in any decade? Not just the decade that you were alive, but I mean, you could start yeah. back in the oh, you, can you know go backwards nineteen hundreds or whenever they started making movies. The nineteen twenties. Yeah, nineteen twenties. Let's mm. say. All I right. Remember the, I remember <laughs> those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are great. Uh, um. When a guy, when a guy's on an, on an organ playing <laughs> yeah. playing the song behind, oh, yeah. the, Terry organ, remembers yeah. when the talkies started. The yeah. Talkies. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember when color yeah. came yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, Steve, you go first. All right, Steve, take oh, it. Oh, I'm first. Yep. So this is interesting because Julie and I were having babies in the 90s, and so we really didn't see any movies. And this whole thing of streaming today, you know, you can see any movie if you mm-hmm. wait long enough, you know, because it'll come out on streaming. So we right. didn't see anything in that decade in the 90s. And then even pretty much in the early 2000s, it was a struggle. So I kind of go back to the 80s okay, where... I, uh, you know, graduated from high school, went off to mm-hmm. college, and so just you're seeing movies in that era of yep. being single, and so very so impactful. Name a, because that's going to help me. What, what would be what would be the eighty? Well, I was oh, back. No, I, well, no, I, well, I know which movies I loved. Okay. Well, the original I, Top Gun. Right, that'd be late eighties. I'd say like eighty six, eighty seven. Yeah, 87. yeah okay. right. Came out in that, and okay. then you had that whole genre of. Um, Adam Sandler doing the wedding singer, or was that's that not eighties? No, that's ninety. Yeah, that's ninety. Yeah, that's 90s. Yeah, that's 90s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna uh, okay. Maybe you got some right. Hoosiers, Rain Man, Field of Dreams, right? Indiana yeah. Jones, right? Yeah. That's, oh yeah, all that's, the rebeat. That's all eighties. That's eighties. Yes. That's all where 80s where stuff. is where is some kind of wonderful and can't buy me love? <laughs> hold it, hold it. Some kind of wonderful. Is that another Hallmark movie? <laughs> oh no. no, no, it's great. Who was the star in that? <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is exactly like the, the Hallmark. Oh, no. No, no, no. no. Oh, no. no. Paul, what have you done with this question? <laughs> well, You've brought us back to the Hallmark kind of podcast. Wonderful. That's, that's 1987. Okay. Oh, 80s. So 80s okay. is definitely, because uh, Rocky. Yeah. Well, that's okay. 70s. Late 70s, but it went yeah. into the 80s. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, and the and, 90s and the 2000s and yeah. the 2010s yeah. So, yeah. and the 2020s. Yeah. So I'm going to go with just 80s. Okay. Yeah, okay. for sure. All right. I'm, I, we're old. Yeah, okay. Well, you guys are about a decade older than I am. Mm-hmm. Or more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Couple decades. Couple decades. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm saying I'm saying nineties. Because I mean nineties, that's when I'm gra- that's when I'm going through high school, graduating high school, entering into college. So of mm. course that's gonna be all the all the movies that as a young teenage boy made me just laugh hysterically all the way through. Yeah. 
you know, another spin on this question could be to music. Which decade? If you could only listen mm. to one decade right. of music, mm. what, yep. what would you listen 60s. to? 60s. 60s. Okay. <laughs> Got it. No, I'm just. <laughs> that was, sorry. That was almost. That was almost. Wow. Like, oh, whoa. What okay. is wrong with you? Okay. No, there's some great music that came out of the '60s. Thank just you, Steve. Amazing. <laughs> you know, during uh, during the message this, this weekend, I had said on my college application or college, you know, housing thing, and it's mm-hmm. like, what, check all the different types of music you listen. And I listened to all these music genres from the 90s and you could tell who was picking up the who was picking up the inside joke there was a few few chuckles of people who mm-hmm. also were familiar with the 90s music but not everyone yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's very fan well you the funny part is you didn't really mention country cuz that was actually your that was a big deal to you. I have, 90s country is still <laughs> and it's still a, a playlist it's still still on the playlist in the Edmonds household in fact yesterday saturday morning just doing stuff around the house Turned on the '90s country playlist. Matt always yeah. surprises me with his taste in music because I yeah. also heard he's a big Michael Jackson yeah. fan too. I, yes, that's so it right. Was, it was Which, right. Garth Brooks, '90s country. Yep, and Michael Jackson. Michael and, Jackson. and let me just—we yep. won't go into this, but don't ever touch his CDs. <laughs> don't, and I mean, don't touch his CDs. <laughs> Period. <laughs> almost okay. ended. A, almost ended the friendship. That's right. So t- this is Terry. You're going back now. It's, the topic is serving for this weekend. Okay, okay. okay. And you and you just <laughs> you just entered into that space. So Terry was one of the was one of the youth leaders in high school youth group when I was in high school, mm-hmm. and I showed up with a. You remember the old CD binders, everybody? I have and one. You flip through. I yeah, have one in my car. I, <laughs> oh I no, you do not. <laughs> in the no. Do you really? Terry, yeah, saves actually, it's in everything. the it's in the Rav Four, but okay. it's still in the back back. Of the okay, car. so yep. Terry, when uh, so just to be clear, when we burn this podcast onto a CD. <laughs> Uh, will you, will this podcast accompany the rest of your CDs and your CD binder? Absolutely. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, so, so but one of the things with my CD binder as a as a kid, I you got to be able to see what the CD is. So I always just had them straight. I had them you know upright so mm-hmm. you could see the label. And Terry just made fun of. Well, here we are, three decades later or however long, and Terry, you still you Matt, still picking you, a fight. Matt, you yelled at me. <laughs> <laughs> you yelled at me. Didn't so, know you, didn't yeah. know he's going to be your father-in-law, and he yelled at you. At yeah, that time. I wouldn't say. It. Steve, look at me. Do I look like the kind of guy that would yell over someone dis- or, you know, making the CDs disorganized? I've, I've never seen it. Yeah, I've never seen it. You've never seen me yell or no, get that I've never exactly. Seen, yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs> we'll, okay. We'll pick it up at another podcast. I don't feel like I heard Paul's answer about the movies. You know, I okay. go nineties. Okay. We'll keep mm-hmm. it simple, All but right. I feel like there's a golden age in there somewhere. Do you got a favorite nineties movie over there, Paul? Um, maybe The Sandlot. Oh, Sandlot's a good one. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good, 90s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. and a deep cut is uh, that thing you do. If you've never right. seen that, thing yeah, you the do. one hit wonders. Yep, yeah, the O'Neaters. If you've never seen it, it flew a little under the radar. <laughs> yeah. Go see it; it's good. It's a Tom yeah. Hanks film. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Directed, yeah, yeah. starred. That's right. Yeah, mm. I saw. It. Okay, I was not the target market for that movie though. So. But you saw it and loved it. Uh, I didn't. But I you guys know. did oh. not know. You didn't know some kind of wonderful. I didn't know that movie. Who was in and that? Some kind of wonderful is well, we'll have to look that up. But uh, <laughs> "Can't Buy Me Love" was Patrick Dempsey. If you yeah, I remember that one. Okay. Buy me love. Yeah. But Steve Bo, take it. Yeah. Wasn't that the Beatles? <laughs> well, that was, yeah. Okay. Well, Anyhow, <laughs> this is exactly this is what, what the Hallmark <laughs> podcast yeah. was yeah. for like an hour. So we found the common denominator. Terry, yeah. Terry and I that <laughs> screw up all these shows. All right. All right well, here's. Um, Here's one of the things that I want to mention before we dive into serving and friendship, which, again, that's where we're headed today, friends. Okay. okay. So for you listeners who are just joining us, <laughs> we <laughs> are going to talk How about, was that about right? serving and friendship because we are in the middle of this series called Forming Friendships in a Lonely World. Um, but to, to let you know just how how close these friendships are, we can send each other emails and notes um, that uh, that I find truly entertaining. So I sent a note to you guys, Steve and Terry. I sent I sent an email to you and my note says something like, "Hey, would you come join me on the podcast?" Steve, your response, word for word, I copy pasted it here. It says, "I'm in if Terry's in." Of course, that's that's always <laughs> how these things okay. start. Yes. Okay. I reply all and say, "I like where this is heading." <laughs> Terry replies all here for the final for the final note and Terry says, "I'm in as well." For my green room <laughs> snack, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For my green... Now, what makes you think there's a green... What, 
Come well, on I, now. Okay. For my I, green room snack, Terry says, I need M&M's. All green. Yeah. And they're not here. Terry. <laughs> Terry. What? Terry. Terry. That, I misunderstood the well, level I, the I, level of I, this production. I wasn't um, asking for snack requests. And not to mention, it's a podcast. You don't want to be sitting here chomping on M&Ms while, it's, you're, while it's, it's, you're mic'd up. But you have those before you start. It's like if there's a break. Oh, uh, Terry. Steve, did you show up expecting any sort of a treat or a green room snack? No, I had to bring my own drink. Yeah, you know, okay. I always see these podcasts and right. everybody has drinks. And I don't All know right. Well, you know what? Drink. You know what, you guys, Terry? You 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 asked for it. So here, oh here's what we brought for you. Oh, Look man. at this. Look at this. I was sandbagging. Oh. Here you are. Wow. And for, for oh. our, our friends who are just listening, not watching, it's a giant glass jar filled with oh. M&Ms, green only. Okay? Wow. That so that's is, for you, my friend. Thank you, Matt. That's, that's so kind. And wow. Steve, and that then, is. Steve, we did some asking around and found out, okay, well, does Steve also like green M&Ms? And I mean... Steve, is there any candy that you don't like? Uh, pretty much, I haven't found one. Yet. Okay, I what would be like. your favorite type of candy? Well, Ooh. I like the really, really sugary ones, like sour, sour patch. That's, Mike and I. That's what I heard. I heard yeah. sour candies. Oh, <laughs> so man, a, I gave these up years ago. A, a jar of a sour balls, large jar wow. of sour candies, and that's for both of you guys. Okay. Oh, that's so nice of you. Where did I, you get all those green M and M's? That is a huge jar. Where? <laughs> <laughs> they don't just sell green M and M's. His daughter right? had to pick through multiple bags. <laughs> there are <laughs> every one of those. We just rip open a regular bag and then we and we, pull we hand pull out individual uh, green M and M's one I'm at a time. Just picturing you in your yep, office with yep, chocolate yep. around your face, like I yep. can't do this anymore. I'm so done. <laughs> no, you can buy regular. You can buy green M and M's like that. Really? Yeah. Is that at Winco? Yeah, the yeah, bins. Yeah. Well, Winco. we you know I know that's where these come from. This is the Winco bins. You know who we can thank for he- helping supply candy. Andy. Melissa. Becky oh. Youngs. Oh, oh yes. Becky. Yes. Loves She's, you. Yes. We do love She's Becky. The best. Yeah. She's the best. We love her. She's been right, a part so, of our mini ministry journey. So now, okay. now to show our great mm-hmm. love and kindness to you guys. Thanks for t- g- being here this afternoon, sharing some of your story, some of the story of your friendship, and how you've served alongside one another. And you can, you really can munch on some of the candy while while we podcast along, okay? so <laughs> I don't think you want me doing that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, this is really kind, but I can I ask a question of Paul? Because I know the listeners, Paul is like has his own following. Don't you have like an Instagram <laughs> now? <laughs> Paul, the guy that's never yeah. seen. No, there's no, no, there's no Instagram. Thousands of followers for Paul. No, and nobody knows who he is, what he looks like, but from past podcasts, you know, Hartley would always ask you, you know, how your workouts were going. And I, I think I heard last week that you had top 500 pounds on your squat or deadlift or the something deadlift, like that. deadlift, deadlift, yeah. yeah. Right? So I brought you a little gift, Paul. Oh, just, no. You did? Yeah, just a little gift here. I, I found this <laughs> shirt, and you never want to forget to have rest days. What okay. does that say? If you can see this. All right, it's, the, the uh, T-shirt says, yeah, the T-shirt on the back, it says, Nike Wellness Club rest days are best mm. days. That's amazing. Rest days. I and you know then I I got yes. a little nervous because you got guns, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna fit. Yeah, is that an but XXL? I know, I know you guys like to wear them tight. So <laughs> there you go, you, Steve. Paul. Wow. Shoot that. All right, hey Paul. So on workout T-shirts, are you automatically just cutting the sleeves off? I'll cut them off right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what I figured. Well, yeah. he's mixing. Yep. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Now that's I feel good. bad that Matt doesn't have a gift. Uh, Listen. Yeah, I didn't bring anything. <laughs> um, so I feel great right now. Um, you know, Terry, you know how hey, you can Matt, make it up I to me? I actually took could... notes during your talk, <laughs> oh, so yeah, that's my Steve. gift to you. Yeah, yeah. Shoot that. Yeah. This out. Terry, your gift can be watching the kids while Melissa and I go to it. <laughs> See Jerry Seinfeld yeah. and Jim Gaffigan. So, so there's no <laughs> tickets coming out at this event. Okay, not not a one. Okay, so Steve and Terry, <clears throat> yes. you guys have been friends for years. Dare I say decades? Um, when did you guys become friends? To walk us through that. I'm sure there was maybe a couple different moments when you guys are getting to know one another, but happened happened here at New Heights through a New Heights connection. Well, it's definitely New Heights, mm-hmm. and um, it's funny because you said the one time you met me. You were doing a, uh, a staff. My wife has been on staff for a number of well, years. Well, that's when you told me. Yeah, but <laughs> there was another time I think I met you. Okay. Because there's still a photo out there, and we went Christmas tree hunting. Oh. Uh-huh. Do you remember that? I do. I do. And there's this picture of all of us, and your kids are little, my kids are little, mm-hmm. and Matt's future wife is in the photo as well. As a, 
small. Oh, it's that far back. Yeah, it goes back. But that, but I met him, but I don't really remember him. Mm. After, you know, because okay. he went, he went and talked to me. It was kind of, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, cri- so Christmas tree. You guys happen to be at the same Christmas tree lot at the same time with the same group of friends. Yes. But then, but then, when I think the official then meeting was the staff mm-hmm. dinner event during the holidays, and Terry was dressed up as uh, Axel. Oh. Have you ever, do you remember Axel? He'd put on the wig and yes. play the guitar and mm-hmm. like Axel Rose. Mm-hmm. Axel Rose. Yeah. yeah. And and I went home that night and I said, "Who is that guy? He is hilarious." And then I think I got a call from you to do summer camp one time. Or something. Terry, how many times did you don that Axel Rose costume? Um, too many. Um, but <laughs> he's all I, too many. I I, I mean. A few times at camp, for sure. Uh-huh. A few times in what at the I think we 109 was also the the great room. The great or room. I don't know if it yeah. came we, at Central Vancouver. Definitely campus. Yep. there. We we um, I was asked to wear it, mm-hmm. and then I stopped wearing it mostly because I found out later so many of the staff <laughs> the staff so many of the staff apparently would they would laugh. And I'd say, oh, they're really enjoying. It. Oh. They, and I came to find out later that they. They just they just said it was it was just too silly. It was just too silly. Yeah, and <laughs> and I wasn't really that entertaining. I think at that it point. was really entertaining. It yeah. was entertaining. The, yeah. he the whole this, persona. He wore this little shirt. Yeah, it was like the you uh-huh. know the nineties. It yep. was like the court you know cut off yeah. shirt. Yeah, speaking of cutting sleeves off yeah. shirts, Paul. <laughs> Terry's been there. Ter- Terry as off. Axel Rose would cut the sleeves and the belly. Yeah, right. The belly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was not pretty. <laughs> so it kind of came to a halt. All right. So um, Steve sees you in this getup and doing this persona as mm-hmm. Axl Rose and Steve's like you know this is a guy that I think I'd like to do ministry with so <laughs> that was, those weren't the exact <laughs> words but something yeah. to that effect yeah so. I, I actually think we had gone uh, to one of the Camp Canada's mm-hmm. um, Julie actually came Steve's wife came mm-hmm. and, and joined us and it was after that Steve that I think we made a connection and it was like hey you need to come on he actually had a little background with Young Life mm-hmm. um had some great, great ideas, and uh, so we thought you should come along, and and it just started pretty much that way. Yeah, and well, it was pretty much my wife came home from Camp Canada, and she goes, "This is not my deal. Goes, this is totally your deal." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, and that was a bit of the connection. Yeah. All yeah. right. So and the year when you guys are talking Camp Canada, I mean, I'm going back in the archive, and I'm thinking like 2006. Six? Okay. Yeah. Right around there. Yeah. All right. Around so there. almost 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Almost 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because you didn't go to Canada. No. Correct? I you started, started right after Coeur d'Alene. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So then you guys, um, you end up both serving at camp together, high school camp. You did that mm-hmm. for a couple of years. But then, and then, and through that, you guys get to know one another. You become closer friends. Mm-hmm. And and since then, over the past 20 years, you guys have served in lots of different areas of ministry, both in the church, outside of the church. Mm-hmm. Give, give me some of those. How, how are other ways that you've served together in addition to high school ministry and high school camp? Well, Steve, with, Steve just pointed at Terry, and Terry shook yeah. his head no. No, so, no, 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 no. I, I mean, it, it has been, um, you know, when, when Steve came and, and kind of became a part of the youth ministry, um, you know, we just began to... Uh, make connections, and really, it was really all about planning at that point. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, we didn't know each other that well. Um, they, the Bows had just these wonderful children that we knew were going to be coming through the youth group. But I think it was just through planning sessions we'd start to talk, and and there were things that we would be doing within youth group, not just camps. That too many to mention, right? R- regardless of whatever mm-hmm. they were. And you're um, talking like other events, other activities, small groups. That that's what you mean by planning all everything that goes yeah, into youth ministry. Yeah, because okay. the 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 leadership group, I mean it was um, the uh, student pastor at that point would 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 say, Hey look, we gotta bring this group together. It was really mm-hmm. a great, great group of people. It wasn't okay. one or two people. And um, we began planning and, and doing all sorts of, of youth events. And Steve was always a his mind went to the actual, the I would say, the more fun um, ideas, just because of your background with regards to young life. The young life background. Yeah, yeah. without a doubt. Um, 
Yeah. And what was the Tuesday night event? Things we was in focus. We did in focus. It was called in focus. Yeah. So we'd kind of help and host at that at times. At and that was back in like early two thousands. That was like the the midweek uh, like small group. Yeah, Bible yeah. Study for a small group for the high school students mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. come meet at mm-hmm. homes yep. and and connect and yeah. read the yeah. word and so and and then it began to just you know grow from there. It was mm-hmm. just we would we were part of a group of leaders that were highly invested, just loved the students. And, you know, you had come through the, the youth group as well. Um, and then we just found ourselves over time as a result of doing ministry together, also finding out we had some common interest as well. Um, but we, you know, we went to, if we can talk about these things, we yeah. went to, we had camp together. Then, of course, there was this experience that I had where I was invited to the Bows with Kelly, uh, my wife, and then we didn't know what we were being invited to. Because this is how Steve, hey, come on over to our home. And we walked in and Pastor Matt's there. Oh, okay. And, Multi-level marketing. And, uh-huh. and, and, and <laughs> Alex uh, Mutagubia was there. And okay. I thought, oh, well, they're going to ask us for some form of support. And uh-huh. Steve is always the guy that's like, much like his response, if I'll do it if Terry does I'm it. I'm in if Terry's <laughs> in. Yeah. And the next thing you know, we were being invited to go to Uganda. Uganda. Okay. Yeah. And the funnier part is, as you know, I, I don't travel well. Um but we started doing Uganda ministry together. Mm-hmm. Um, what else have we done? We've we've done, and that was not a one and done deal. I mean, you no. guys traveled to Uganda a couple different times, yeah, for a few there. times, uh-huh. yeah. For, and, and that was for we were doing some business coaching. Yep. So mm-hmm. our experience, both being in the business world, um, was very applicable. And we actually took that model. And again, I, I love what Terry said. This is you know, you're talking to two of us, but it's always a bigger team right. than just yeah. us. We're, yeah. we're just a small part of that, yeah. but um, yeah, it was fun because we did a, a, a fit for life is what we called the business um, development thing in Uganda. But we also, you know, ran a model here, right here in, at New Heights, mm-hmm. with some small entrepreneurs and businesses. Some of them still operating today within yeah. the church. Um, so yeah, that was that was two big ones. So it's some of the content that you brought to Uganda. To help individuals there, and then you that same content you had you we you put it as into a yeah. ministry here, and this is and again this is back in the day, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, okay, and we there was a component Matt where um, when I, we were downtown when New Heights West was downtown, right? Oh, and you and, guys served together downtown at New yeah, Heights West. Well, he, I, mm, I I didn't really go to West. He didn't. He was not. <laughs> He didn't go to West. That <laughs> Showed much. up every day. However, okay. he, w- he was a huge support to me when I was at West, Got um, it. doing the campus pastor piece there. And mm-hmm. we would get together, and Steve has always been the guy that's going to just be a truth teller. I mean, as we talk about that in in relationships, and um, so hugely helpful even during that particular time of ministry. So you had youth group going on. We had Uganda going on. We were spending quite a bit of time just talking about ministry in mm-hmm. general, but. Always kind of with this eye for how are we investing in students for the most part? Because that's right. what Uganda was about. Yeah. It was about that investment in young college students in high school. And Terry and I, you asked a question about, you know, our connection. I was kind of laugh about this because I've called Terry my brother that I, you know, were separated somewhere along the way. Because <laughs> I mean, seriously, it is it has been one of those things we we are very different, but we the the things that we think about are very similar. He's much better at uh, verbalizing those things. Steve, we have seen a snapshot of this taking place right now are, are over, the, pa- over the, the past sa- half hour. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> we're yeah. tracking with you. Yeah. And I can give him a hard time pretty easily. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's 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 been fun over, yeah. over the years. Yeah. All right, so you, so you guys have traveled literally around the world together. You've done ministry mm-hmm. ministry stuff here. You've done ministry trips, youth, college, young adults, adults. You, you guys, you guys have been engaged in lots of different ministry and serving side by side. You, I'm sure, I'm sure of it. You guys got some fun memories, some funny memories, some fond memories. Yeah, give us one of them. <laughs> G- give us, give us a camp story. Well, I shouldn't have said yeah first because you're going to wait for me. But give us a camp story I, or a Uganda oh. story. Just give us, give us a highlight, your favorite moment, your funniest moment, something like that. It, it, sometimes it's the most painful and funny <laughs> all at the same time. Now, okay. I want to make sure that people are also aware that our our spouses, our wives have been just a really big part of our relationships as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Steve and I do have a, 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 a wonderful um, a wonderful friendship, but our, our spouses have been a part of 
much, if not most, of what yeah, we've so done. Yeah, so the four of you are often uh, for engaged sure. in ministry together. Yes. Got it. Yeah, without a doubt. I, I was, the, the thing that came to my mind, and often comes to my mind, because I was actually showing this photo uh, to people at work, was Steve had this great <laughs> idea at, um, at Black Lake that he got he had those costumes right a spider-man costume and a okay. what was the other spider-man because that's captain what i wore america. and captain, captain america. america all right and black lake is the high school, school summer camp, camp. Yeah. yeah okay yeah. and this this would be maybe 2000 i'll say 16 okay and a little and, more recent and, mm -hmm. yeah i mean i would have been 56 or something at that point but anyways <laughs> and steve's like hey so not young and spry <laughs> no is what not, you're well here's the idea okay. so steve's like hey let's wear the costumes <laughs> <laughs> at high school camp, okay. and we'll go out and we'll MC the activities right, in kind those of the costumes. Field, the field yeah. day, <laughs> right? And, and, I, and I heard, I heard Spider Man and Captain, Captain America. Yeah, and okay. so I was Full. given the Spider Man. And these are one. those ones that fit more like you know, spandex, <laughs> like, like, a, no. like a glove, <laughs> and, oh, no. and little, little sausages out there, fifty <laughs> some odd years old. <laughs> yeah. and, and you don't see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. So the short version is we don't oh. look like Paul. Just let's oh, put it down. Oh dear! Way. All right, don't yeah, look you're not deadlifting. 500 pounds. <laughs> right, exactly. So Steve is like, hey, we got to do this. This is, again, if I can get Terry to do it, I'll do it. Right. So okay. We run out there, and all of a sudden, if you remember at, at Black Lake, there's also a daycare or a day camp that goes right. on. Right. And these young kids come running up and see us. And all I can remember, it's still etched in my head, this young young boy, but he was not as young as the others. He ran up in Spider-Man, and I'm like, yes, how are you? And he goes, You've gained weight. <laughs> and I'm like, go back to your children's camp at that point. And Steve is doing what he's doing right now. He thought that was hilarious. So I'll just add that a year oh, or good. two later, we're in Uganda. Yeah. And Steve's like, let's do that again. No. I brought him. And you brought the costumes. Costume. To Uganda. <laughs> and we ended up running out on a soccer field <laughs> where Ugandans are playing. Steve's like, let's just run out there. Um, oh, and no. so again, <laughs> let's interrupt their soccer game. Yeah. And, and it, remember, these... it's about 90 degrees. Too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, so now, now you're Spider Man and Captain America with big pit stains. Oh, it's too. Terrible. So that's yeah. really attractive. And he <laughs> likely had not. Yeah. Anyways, uh, those are moments that where your good friends yes. can say, hey, this is a great yeah. idea. Let's go do this. And, um, and so I, it was a lot of fun. Sadly, I've done that to you <laughs> more than <laughs> once. Oh, many times. Because there was at one summer camp, too, I don't know if you remember the J-Lo, it was on oh, YouTube. Um, what was it? Jimmy Fallon did the, um, everybody's talking about my... Tight, tight pants. And I said, hey, Terry, let's... No, I don't remember that one. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> you don't? Seriously? Remember? I don't. I really don't oh, remember okay. that one. Paul, you remember that? No, I remember because this is my first memory of you too. Oh, that's right, because you Wait, were Black Lake. at camp. Were you were you in the high school ministry at the time? I yeah, I went to Black Lake. Okay. It was my first year, and then uh, there were yes. these two older gentlemen <laughs> in very tight white pants. And Terry like was trying to learn the song, and he didn't. He went up there, not oh, really no. totally knowing the song. <clears throat> it was hilarious. Well, okay. The all right, you're right. I didn't okay. know the song. All right. I, I didn't know the I song. I didn't really yeah. know the but, song either. But, but we... I was supposed to be coming out at a certain time, and yeah. somebody somehow the. I missed. Yeah, that. it was yeah. another thing where, it, and you know, you're you're practicing. This is going to be so funny. Oh yeah. And then you go out, and you're just you realize this is not smart. Yep. Um, well, who who was it that just thought she had it on her phone and she videoed it? Um, the volleyball oh. player. Um, no, the fact that everyone's carrying around phones these days for for little skit moments like yeah. that, and then they capture it, and you're like, "Well, this is." That's yeah, why we yes. don't do these anymore. <laughs> What's her name? Nikki. 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 Yeah. Gorsh. Oh, now she, Nikki Gordon. She was yeah. crying in the back of the. I mean, laughing. So hard. Yeah. For, so for that alone, it was worth it. Yeah. Well, yeah. laughing or crying? Because well, I could I could imagine either one, yeah. given, given what you guys have described yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. It was very and, and you got to, you know, we'll move on hopefully quickly. Yes. Um, the, the ministry value of, of this, we have no idea <laughs> because these are the things that would be part of the entertainment that we would Trying do. Trying to make people feel comfortable yeah. is, is the ministry goal. I'm yeah. with you. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. To, to kind of... Yeah, because anyone who's been on one of our, our camps before knows that we throw a lot of energy into mm -hmm. um, like creativity, making it a really fun experience, a funny experience, and yeah. so that if we can get students laughing along the way, um, then yeah. that 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 opens the door to spiritual realities to say, all right, what's what's the Lord doing here in this group and through this group? Yeah. So, yeah. all right, and and we brought it there because. Because not all serving is dressing up in costumes together. Yeah. So, uh, 
<laughs> so do this for me because clearly the Lord has been working through both of your lives and and impacting people around you. What's what's a spiritually significant moment that you guys have shared or that you've experienced while you've been serving side by side? Do you have one of those? Yeah, I you know it, it was interesting one. You know Terry is a pastor through and through, and um, it has just been great over the years. And one of the camps we were out at Camp Kusick. What did we call it? Camp. Cam- is that River is that Idaho? View? That would be Riverview. Riverview yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah. We were in most is that eastern Washington yeah, or fur- Idaho or further northeast no. corner mm-hmm. of Washington, as far as you can go without being in Canada and okay. Idaho. And we were out there. We just did that camp two summers. Fortunately, um, poor, some of those kids are still traumatized to this day. We uh-huh. were on the bus so long, but, but anyhow, yeah, that is a long bus ride long, from southwest Washington up to northeast uh, corner of Washington. Yeah, yeah, the bus ride and the two years that we were there, the first year there that the entire camp was flooded, like yeah. or Ponderé River or Lake or whatever is up there was Oof. absolutely flooded. A lot of mildew. A lot of oh, the camp, yeah, yeah the and sewer, okay. yeah. sewer backing up and everything. And the next year we go, and it's like 100 degrees every day. So we went from one extreme to the <laughs> other. Kids are getting sick all over the place, or students are. Um, Boy, you're painting a really good picture of both these years back <laughs> and to I, back. And, I, and yeah. I may not even have the right camp. It could have been Coeur d'Alene. Anyhow, but we were up no. there, and, and it was um, one night I got a call from Julie, and... Um, her mother-in-law was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Mm. And I was in the our kind of little room where we would prep for the days or the evenings or whatever and just started bawling. And Terry was just such a huge encouragement. He prayed with me mm. and, um, you know, just was very helpful in that moment. So, mm. again, you look at those times of serving and um, those sorts of relationships and that piece of encouragement and just support. So, yeah. yeah. It's it's touching to hear um, all of these shared memories that you guys have together, and and then and I'm sure that throughout all of those different serving opportunities, there's there's countless of those sorts of like spirit, spiritually significant moments that that you encounter along the way. Um, but you wouldn't have experienced those, and you wouldn't you wouldn't have experienced those spiritually significant moments as well as these really fun, entertaining, just making memories kinds of moments, unless you were committed to serving. And so what was it that, and you both, when I look at your lives, um, your, your lives are, are, could be defined by your tremendous commitment to serve, serve the Lord, serve his church, serve inside the church, serve outside the church. So where did that commitment come from for both of you? Um, what, what is it that, that caused you to make serving a priority with your life? Do you want me to go? Yeah, I'm waiting. You're waiting for me. To I just go. spoke last. So. Oh, okay. Um, I, I mean, I'll I'll try and keep it concise, but it's actually really hard, Matt, to keep it super duper short. But um, because of the the importance that people played in my life hmm. uh, in making a, a decision for Jesus, and, Got it. and and that's that's at the core. And I I think I can speak for Steve on this. We're our interest is we love our friendship. We love the fact that this is developed as a result of doing ministry. But there isn't a time that Steve and I are not talking, and Steve has encouraged me in this so much about let's make sure that we're doing this for the right reason. Mm-hmm. And, and at the end of the day, it was primarily at that time students, but it's, right. it, things have changed. We've, we've aged a little bit. And it's really <laughs> about is... Are people coming to know about the Lord? Mm. Is there something that we could possibly do, which might be making fun of ourselves um, or just sharing our testimony or just Mm. talking with an individual student or an adult? Because really at the basis of our friendship is we just love the Lord. Um, And for for myself, when I entered in, I was changed as a high school student, Mm -hmm. and there were men who built in to me. And some of those men are still alive. They were older. They're still alive today. And I just can remember making a commitment. I mm-hmm. thought I was going to be full-time uh, pastor at a church paid by a church. Uh-huh. And it's been different than that, but not a whole lot different. And my heart is, is that people built into me. And mm-hmm. is it possible, Lord, for you, if I just made myself available? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you come across people who are, are just like-minded with the same desire and that's where our friendship you know and i'll just 
say this is, and turn it over to Steve, is that you need somebody in your life, and I've had a number of these people, and Steve and I both still have other friends that are deeply impactful in our lives, but I know that Steve will ask me the question um, to make sure that I'm still walking just as close as possible to the Lord. Love that. Um, that's and good. so that's that's kind of how and why I entered in because of others doing that mm. in my life. Yeah, that well said. And and similarly, um, the people that in you know invested in me over the years. I mean, I still to this day can remember those guys from mm. middle school, high school, their mm. names, and and I was a terrible student in their <laughs> and the impact group. that they had on you, the impact spiritually yeah. that they had on me. But really, the the bottom line is the the response to the gospel, mm-hmm. and just you know, for me, it's like. Well, I'm just doing this to to serve God. Yeah. It's it's not any. Um, I want to. I'm responding to what He's done for for me in my life, and it's my way of, you know, um, bringing that to other people. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't call myself an evangelist because I'm not a great guy at you know, like you and all the other pastors here. But at least if I can make a way and open a door mm-hmm. and you know, bring people with me along this journey. Mm. And, and that's, that's my focus from a service yeah. perspective. It's, it's, you know, and, and again, like Terry said, you always got to check yourself because why are you doing this? It's because you want to <laughs> want to be the funny guy or mm. you want to be the speaker or you want, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it, it, but again, yeah. it's, you know, the, the, the fun part about all of this is the years of um, being a follower of Jesus Christ is, is, mm. you know, he really does take, what little you have and, and multiply it, it. and multiply yeah. it and just in and, and and the amazing part is you know you've heard people we heard people from camp this summer come back and say i got more out of this than anything that i gave and but, and that the really people who, the people who were serving the yeah. people who were serving yeah, yeah. i right. mean it was just they came out it's just like man god just did all these things and it's like i didn't even you know i hope hope some kids but yeah. you know just for me spiritually it was just such a great moment it doesn't mean it was easy doesn't mean i wasn't exhausted mm-hmm. by the end of the summer like most of anybody who's listening that knows from mm-hmm. singing in a cabin all all summer so you know, when i hear you guys share that the, the two pieces that i that are not lost on me are um, the first one that you both echoed that there were people who invested in your life and who demonstrated the lord's loving kindness to both of you when um, when you came to faith in Christ and you saw that modeled for you by someone else. And so that's what first kind of put that put that spark within you. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the, the second one is, um, of course, the creating that space for someone else. Mm-hmm. and yeah. and then you can you can invite others in along on the journey with you and invite others to see the Lord working in them and through them in a significant way as well. So, so my question for you, though, is what um, what would you say to someone who says, ah, okay, I, I want to serve, I, I, I want to serve the Lord, but, and then fill in the blank with whatever the reason is I can't. I don't have the time. I don't know where to start. I don't have the extra energy. Because yeah. obviously it requires time, energy, and, and something from you. I mean, serving is a sacrifice. Yeah. I, I'll answer for it might be slightly different or maybe a lot different than Steve. I think that you'll you'll get asked, Matt, and I think we talked about this before, that, uh, an individual might go, I, I don't have a role, um, so I can't serve. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's one that you might hear, or I don't have time. And and when you break down the opportunity to, to, to minister to people or to serve, it really is just av- availing yourself at, at any of the smallest things that, that, that cross our path. There's mm-hmm. needs for those things. And um, I think even, you know, again, those who are listening or, or watching, if you're at West, Steve uh, and Bob Youngs, are yes. they're, 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 they're parking attendants. This is what they're doing uh, uh, along with all the other things that they do as well. And I think that um, this idea of time um, makes us think that we're living our life in in silos, that mm. there's my church time and there's maybe my work time and there's my family time. And what's been helpful for me is I had individuals say, listen, just think about that you don't live your life out in silos. Mm. Mm-hmm. Serving the Lord, uh, wanting people to hear the good news is all a part of 
the time we spend at church and the time we spend at work and the time we're with our family. It's not separate from, right? it's just all part of. And that's mm-hmm. been hugely helpful for me. And, and mm-hmm. Steve, I don't know if that's similar for... Yeah, that that's really good because even, you know, yes, we would love people to serve at New Heights Church, you know, children's area. There's always a need to hold a baby or <laughs> teach a class or whatever. But but I think that's really well said because if, if your passion is... Um, you know the food bank you're serving mm-hmm. as a as a as a disciple of you know you're being sent out there and it right. it, it you know um, I think it can be all of those spaces your workspace your school you're here um, and again really being sensitive I like what you said Matt in the talk too as well that you know your first one was prayerfully seek God mm-hmm. and that really is just being close to him it's like you know okay show me show me where you want to serve. I've heard there's a need here. I, I've never held a baby, and and again, that may not be the right place for you um, to do that. But I think it's kind of at least at least be open and sensitive to where God might be leading you. You know, try some different things and and see what happens. I love hearing your advice to dive in and dive in somewhere, mm-hmm. and because I mean, obviously, m- many of the stories we've heard from you guys today have been around youth ministry, high school ministry building into students' lives. But then you just mentioned, Terry, you just mentioned Steve as part of the parking team at New Heights West Vancouver. Um, and and that's got nothing to do with students right now, but it's an area it's an area that needed someone to jump in and serve. And so Steve, you're you and Bob Young's are overly qualified uh, parking <laughs> attendants there. Bob is, <laughs> Bob is more qualified than I am. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so, no. what, so what, would you, what would you say to someone who says, I, well, I want to. I want to serve somewhere, but I just don't know where. Yeah. Well, I, if, if try different things. Yeah. I mean, if, there, if it's about how do I get access or opportunity, mm-hmm. my, the answer would be is, is, is talk to the anywhere from the campus pastor to somebody wearing a, a name tag to the parking attendant and letting them know that you're 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 interested and and test it and try it and what I love what I love about uh, new heights is that we've we've been very very um, wise to give people opportunity to enter in and to exit mm-hmm. oftentimes people are right. afraid to start because once they get in can they ever <laughs> get out there's no you know, off ramp there's no off ramp <laughs> i am yeah. on this freeway for the and rest of my life <laughs> i think that i think it, it is an area that that mm. we have been wise to say hey we want let, let people have an opportunity and also to step back yeah. different seasons in their lives That's um, good. but try different things and then just realize that the smallest thing uh, you mentioned it again in your talk and about coffee um, and just volunteers and the gentlemen that had been serving here yep. for so many years. Mm. Um, ministry happens that way. And yeah. I, again, as we're talking, I, my mind keeps flashing to it. And I won't mention names, but we have had so many other uh, student ministry leaders over the years um, who have just had a huge impact. You bet. But as, they're, as they've grown older, they have just found themselves doing ministry in a different way way. Mm-hmm. And I would I would just encourage people to go, you know what, um, this is what God has really called us to do in some way, shape, mm-hmm. or form. Mm-hmm. It doesn't need to be hours on hours. It could be minutes, but those right. few minutes could make a huge, huge difference. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it. Just in try different things and opportunities. You know, nobody owns anything from, you know, whether it's, whether it's the greeters right. at your campus or whatever. It's like, we're always looking for people, you know, and mm-hmm. and and I think you know, uh, uh, again, um, yeah, I think it's worth trying. And there will be different seasons of your life, you know, like we've had um, students who went through the ministry became leaders. Now they're right. married and they have kids. You mentioned one, I think, of mm-hmm. Nate White, and mm-hmm. you know, he yeah. was a guy that did did summer league. <laughs> he came up through the high school ministry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. We, yeah. We'd still lose him some camps, even as a leader. You know? <laughs> yeah wouldn't know where he was. But yeah. anyhow, uh, but you know, now his focus is different. He's got these kids and right. he's, you know, he's got four of his own, right? Four of his yeah. own now. And, yep. and, you know, that, that, I don't, you know, he, he, where he serves, he still connects with his peers and is pulling them in and, yeah. and making sure, checking in with them through community groups. And um, so, yeah, it doesn't end and it shifts at the different seasons of your life. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think they let us back to camp much you know, <laughs> this season of our life. Okay, so then, well, then let me ask you then, yeah. um, if if youth ministry or, or or investing in students is in the rearview mirror, is it in the rearview mirror? No, I was because I was going to no. say, well, what's what's in the what's what's in front of you then? Where where do you see your serving efforts moving towards right now? What do you, if you could predict five years from now? Here's where I'd really love to be serving. Yeah, I think where are you ve- headed? I think very similarly. You know, it, it's interesting because in the beauty of of following Christ for this many years, um, His kindness is. You know, you get to see people grow up and right. mature in their faith and whatnot, and they become leaders. and And for me, it's really trying to, you know, um, how do I say this? Not, I mean, I'm almost get more in the background, but supporting those mm. yeah. those folks that are coming up in some way that it's like, you know, I don't need to be up front. I don't need yeah. to, but, but I want to help you mm. give you feedback, kind of like Terry and I have talked about before. It's, you know, we check each other, but it's also kind of, okay, we've got some experiences, mm-hmm. you know, you can try that, <laughs> but here's what happened when we did. But here's what we learned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's what we learned. I'm hearing you more of a, as a coach. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, again, it, it, and it may be sometimes stepping up in very direct ministry, you know, parking mm. ministry was obviously there was a need there. And by the way, we always need more people. Um, and <laughs> my little side and, plug. And by the way, you get to wear a safety vest. And you get to wear yeah. a safety vest. Yep. You have yeah. a little, little, little baton. Baton. Uh-huh, with yeah. a flashlight attached yeah. to it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's very good. Steve, like yeah. there's such power mm. in the parking ministry. It's like yeah. the lightsaber. Yes. Yeah. You get a lightsaber, a vest. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You get a... So. Yeah. So anyhow, yeah. I, I, that's where I see kind of, you say, five years yep. from now. Um yeah, just Love just it. that level, but and mm-hmm. again, looking for those opportunities where where you know I can help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. R- really no different. I'm. I love um, the opportunity to. You used to. You and your best friend actually used to have a nickname for me. <laughs> Do you remember what that nickname was? All right, so my best friend who um, who's the sa- he's the same guy that I mentioned in my message this yeah. weekend, where he and I were going to be roommates our freshman year. We weren't roommates, but we ended up being roommates sophomore, junior, senior year. Yeah. And again, I said that he came, he was also from Vancouver. He also was part of New Heights when mm-hmm. we were in high school. And and Terry was one of the volunteer youth leaders. Um, he wasn't like the head guy. But we saw him as kind of second in command. Yeah. And what'd you call me, Matt? We affectionately called you number two. Number two. That was the name. <laughs> number it, two was was yeah. Terry Wren's nickname. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think with that, the, the tr- <laughs> and there's so much more that goes wow. with that. But, wow. But the 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 thought of um, the opportunities that we have to be support to or to be in second or third or fourth, if you if you looked at it that way, but. Mm. It isn't important at all um, to be the lead person. I, I think that if you have a, if God has just shown you something and you can support those who mm-hmm. the Lord has moved into certain roles, that's that's still my greatest desire. My heart still goes to students. Steve and I talk a ton. Justin Laskowski has has you know talked to us about involvement and how we could possibly in some way maybe help. And we might not be able to see it as clearly, but mm-hmm. I think that. Um, working with students, whether they're middle school, high school, or even you know the young adults, is mm-hmm. something that um, shouldn't stop for us. I, yeah. I don't under, and I'll just say I don't understand the concept of hitting a certain age, like in in the in the corporate world where it's like, hey, here's the age that you should retire. I don't think ministry, the gentleman again, that you'll be celebrating his life. Mm-hmm. He he wasn't looking at age; he right. was looking at what would the Lord have us to do. Right. And I think that in the body of Christ, if we all just said, hey, I have some gift, I have some opportunity to to serve, and it doesn't mean more stuff to do, just take that step, mm. um, lives get changed. And, and and the goal of this is is ultimately people to come to know who Jesus is. Yeah. And um, so that's we'll see how it works out over the next handful of years. Guys, I love that. I love it. I love it. And as someone who, as I said, grew up at New Heights, came up through the youth program here and had guys like you, both of you guys, building into young punk students like me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was one too. <laughs> uh, who, who, I got to I got to say thank you and yeah. um and, and thanks for your patience, yeah. for your kindness. 
for the fact that you're willing to say, all right, Lord, you got me here for now, and I want to invest in these students, no matter how much of a punk one of these students can act mm. <laughs> like me. Mm. Um, I'm so grateful for, for your investment yeah. in students like myself. Yeah. So thanks to you guys. It's really our pleasure. Oh, it is yeah. our pleasure. We get to see the fruits. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, at, with this series, this is my, my last question for you guys. This series, Forming Friendships in a Lonely World, um, as we looked at this passage today, we saw Jesus re- recruited his 12 disciples um, and then strengthen those relationships. Do you have any final thoughts, any final comments on friendships that are centered around what the Lord's doing in your life or any final comments on strengthening those relationships within your life, serving together? Go they're, ahead, Steve. Oh, they're both looking at each other. <laughs> no, no, no. I, they're both I, looking, I, both pointing. No, no, I, well, I'm, I spoke last. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, it's your turn. Um, there, there's no written rule here that no, says we have to go every other, okay. but all right, go ahead. that's good. All right, so Steve, you take feels it. feels like it. So, you know, it's interesting, Matt. I really appreciated what you said today in, in the sequence with the passage, you know, see, uh, prayerfully seek God, carefully select friends, um, regularly serve people. In my life, my experience is probably even a little bit of a different sequence mm-hmm. from a, um, you know, from thinking about lonely periods in my life and whatnot. And, you know, yes, for sure, prayerfully seeking God. But I would say, for me, the second part was regularly serving people. Right. And then the friends came. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there was... Oh, that's good, Steve. That's good to hear. You know what I mean? It was was more of, like I said, uh, you know, responding to what what through the gospel Christ has has done for me. Um, You know, it's one of those times I've got a number of moments in my life of great loneliness and, um, you know, thinking that, okay, I've surrendered my life to Christ and now I have no friends, Yeah, you know, so what do I do? But then jumping in to a community, to serving, whether, you know, years ago, Young Life or whatever other ministries I was involved with, and then all of a sudden you, you wake up and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm with, you know, people like yourselves. And it's like, I, I've always, my life, I've always mm. kind of chuckled that I feel like I'm always sneaking into Disneyland. And <laughs> I, just, I just get to be a part of all these great people. You're you surrounded by, by all these people you get to serve side by side exactly. with. Exactly. And it's yeah. like, I don't deserve to be mm. here. I'm not smart enough. Or, you know, whatever it is. Mm. And it's just like, it, so again, that that's kind of my advice. It's, it's Steve, that's, that is so good to hear the that that sequence can shift. Mm-hmm. From from one emphasis to the next, yeah, yeah. 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 And so yeah. you you chose at first seek the Lord and then dive in and serve. And when you started serving, you looked around to your left and looked around to your right, and you said, "I like these people." Yeah, and I it's I like, can build friendships here. Exactly. Yeah. These oh, are that's these fantastic. are people. I that, love hearing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, love it. That are yeah. worth worth you know lifetime. Yeah. Friends. That's yeah, good. So. And one of them is sitting over here right next exactly. to you. Exactly. All right, yeah. Terry. Yeah, well, now Terry. I wish I had gone first <laughs> and didn't have to follow that. That's really good, Steve. But I, I think I would just say that um, that being inclusive, um, I, I, Steve and I have a, a, a blessed uh, you know, friendship for sure, and but it isn't exclusive to just us. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the things that I see in Steve and, and I hope is seen in, in me is that we are, we're just looking for, for opportunities and, and we have been invited into other mm. friendships. It isn't, yeah. and we're looking to, to say, hey, how, how can we invite people along on that path? And then through that serving again, greater friendships are formed. Because again, it, there's too many to mention and my fear would be to to, to miss somebody, but um, this is a broad group of 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 people. Uh, mm-hmm. We've been blessed. I believe that to the day I go and be with Lord Steve will will be a friend. Um, I must. <laughs> I'm acting as well. and I'll go first. Um, I think at that point, <laughs> hopefully, I remember you when you I get older. Yeah, right. yeah. listen <laughs> to you guys. But, uh, <laughs> but the reality, we can joke about it now. <laughs> yeah, we can kid now. But the, uh, I think Matt just um, just always looking for a way to invite people in That's and huge. and making sure that we ourselves are 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 walking with the Lord so we we know that he's just done great work um, mm-hmm. in lives of people and hopefully in our lives as well as we walk with them and how do we share yeah. that yeah I, I love that because what you're hitting on is these two different categories of people. The one who the one who's not yet serving but they're they feel like they're on the outside looking in saying mm-hmm. I want to be part of that. Yeah. And for them it's 
go ask, go jump in, dive in. Mm -hmm. But also for the person who is serving, who does say, I have my network of friends, and rather than just say it's just us and no one else, constantly be looking for who can we invite in? Mm -hmm. And there are people who are not yet serving, but they want to be serving. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the trick, though, is if you are serving, to not say, um, ah, this, this serving thing, it's a burden, and I don't want to put that burden on someone else, therefore I won't even ask. But rather to say, no, I want to invite someone into this circle and into this opportunity to see the Lord working in them and through them. And, um, and to constantly be extending that invitation for others to come join and serve alongside you. Yeah, that's a good summary. That's cer certainly what I've seen you guys model yeah, in, in, in so many different ways. So, mm -hmm. so again, fellas, thank you not only for serving at this church and outside of this church, but thanks for giving us this afternoon mm -hmm. where you can share some of your stories, some of your life with us. I absolutely mm -hmm. love the ministry that I get to do alongside both of you. Yeah. Well, thank you. We thanks appreciate for inviting you. us. Yeah. yeah. Are, are we going to talk about Hallmark now? Hallmark. <laughs> Paul, what do you think, my friend? Pulling the plug. Are, are well, we... <laughs> I, well, wait a minute. I just want to make one closing comment, if I can. And, and okay. It, it, there was some banter last week about the Rams and the Seahawks. Mm, and I just... Was there? I just I just okay. want to point that out. and Because last know, week's podcast was mid-game. Was right? mid-game. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the result was... Uh, if you go back and listen to the podcast, if you haven't listened to it, but I just um, it is part of the series. Terry so, is a yeah. lifelong Rams fan. I am, and I his am. Rams won yeah. last weekend. I'm not sure they're yeah. doing as well right now. Uh, Meanwhile, Steve Bo is rocking the Seahawks. Yeah. Lifetime 1976, yep. fans, rocking the Seahawks yeah. jersey yeah. over there. Yeah. 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 Anyways, okay. I but just, but in the Seahawks won today. Seahawks did win. Hawks today. won today. And yeah. the Rams are playing the Niners. right now. Okay. They're playing the um, Niners, right? They are. Yeah, okay. that's, that's going to be a tough one. We'll see it's a cliffhanger because that game's not over yet. We don't know how it's going to end. We don't. Yes. And we're not going to find out we're by not the end of this know, podcast. But I know sure people <laughs> don't care about that. But, right. fellas, thanks so much right. for joining Thank us. You. Thank Paul, you. as always, thanks for running the show over Thank here, you, my Paul. friend. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. You All rock. God bless you guys. See you guys. So long.